Here's America's pastime. We'll see the Florida Marlins as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Coming at you on 2K Sports. The White Sox call this one home, U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. A look at Mark Burley. He'll be doing his best to get a W on the mound tonight. Hi again, everybody, along with Steve Phillips and John Crock. I'm Gary Thorne. Welcome. Steve getting ready for this ball game. What do you think he's prepared to do against this Florida team? Now Mark Burley has made a living on working quickly. He tries to keep the hitters off balance, and he works at his own pace, which is quick. It keeps the defense in the game behind him, and he throws all of his pitches for strikes. Pepsi presents our starting lineup. We'll check out the Marlins. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand out? Well, Dan Ugla is working on his consistency at the plate. He's a guy who strikes out a whole lot. He does hit a lot of home runs, but he doesn't hit for that high average. He has the ability, though, when you watch him play, he has great hand-eye coordination. You would think if he would take a little off the swing, he can hit for a better average. Let's see if what he's working on plays out today. Getting us going again, Chris Coghlan. It's the Florida Marlins coming off a win, though they were happy to end up splitting 1-1 after losing the first of the two games set against the Cardinals in St. Louis. Well, and right now, this team is just several games back of first place in their division. And it's caught by Ramirez. Now, this shortstop makes it look easy, but there's nothing easy about that. Those hard line drives often are like knuckleballs coming at him, but he made the play. And Jorge Cantu. Well, back in July of last year, Mark Burley threw that perfect game for the Chicago White Sox. And I tell you what, kids, if you're watching a guy and you can't throw 95-96, take a good look at Mark Burley. He'll teach you how to pitch. Strike two. Cantu has to be very careful here. Or Mark Burley, if any pitcher deserved to have a no-hitter, you gotta, you got to give it to him because he pitches games, John. Well, he absolutely does, and the great thing about Mark Burley is he works so quickly that your defense is ready to go on every pitch. There's no lull in the game when he's out there. And another foul ball. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. And he fouls another one off. And he fouls off another one. Ground ball towards second. Beckham. And Cantu set down. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. Highlights, Steve, for these fielders. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Hanley Ramirez to bat. Two outs and nobody on. Burley with a delivery. First pitch way out of the zone. Ball one. Now having some difficulty commanding that two seam fastball. You don't want to throw that pitch up and in. That's a ground ball pitch. Not a ball you want to get a fly ball on. And Ramirez with a swing misses that one. That'll even the count up. Now picked up three big base hits in the game last night. Swinging the bat very well. Good spot that time. Hit that outside corner. One and two. Well, the hitter lays off this pitch realizing you can't do much. When you get that kind of four-seam fastball down and away, it's tough to hit. Good patience. Hanley Ramirez letting it go by. Count is even. Ramirez will foul that one away. And Ramirez fights off yet another during this at bat. Well, even in the count right there, two and two. Pitcher throws a great pitch. You know he's looking to try to go deep, but he stays alive with that defensive swing to keep the at bat going. Three two on the way. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And that's in there. The Marlins, their first man on. For the Florida I'll take a moment right now to check out the base. season that Hanley Ramirez is having so far this year. Seventh in stolen bases, tenth in batting average. And you can also tell that, that hitting in clutch situation. Oh, Ramirez stealing. And he is safe at second. Oh. 
Good eye by Dan Ugla. He lays off that one to even the count. Lifetime, 231 off the White Sox. Swung and a ground ball to third. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Some good work, Mark Burley. Works his way out of the first inning without allowing anyone to score. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And doing the pitching will be Andrew Miller. He'll be starting this one off for Florida. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. I think, Gary, we're going to have to look for this lefty to back some of these hitters off the plate to make them uncomfortable because if they're comfortable, they've got a chance to do some real damage against them. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Yesterday, White Sox picked up the win. They went two straight, taking both games of the two-game series against the Angels. On oh, this ball club's in the middle of a pretty good streak right now. Miller got him to swing. Count 0 1. This ball club's won seven out of their last ten. You keep that going in the course of the year, and you're in good shape. Well, you absolutely are, and there's no reason to believe they can't. This team is a great, great team with every facet working right now. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. That's a great strikeout right there, Gary. Three pitches, and he sits him down. How about that for efficiency? And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. And he's in the top echelon of hits right now. Swing and a shot to third. And so Ramirez retired. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. So who are you looking at, John? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position, shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy. Hit hard on the ground to short. Throws on to first side is retired. And a good half inning there, gone in short. And in the batter's box, it's Ross. He's coming off a game last night where he had two big hits, and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. Swing and a hot shot. And that gets down. Ross, a single. Season's taking form as we look at the standings in the Eastern Division, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the Phillies. It's the Mets in second. At third spot, the Marlins. In fourth place, it's the Braves. And the bottom dwellers, the Washington Nationals. Near first. And Konerko makes the catch. Well, first base could be the hot corner, too, and that was a hot shot to first, but he was able to get up in spirit for the out. And we're going to see Helms here. Well, the 2009 Marlins proved they're here to compete and challenge for the National League East. And although they finished in second place, you have to feel hopeful for this season. Back up the middle. And that puts Helms on first. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well, uh, for the Marlins, they had that taste of a world championship even. Now it's about trying to get back into the postseason. Well, it absolutely is. And they had a good start to the 2010 season, too. They had a great bullpen. Their starting pitching is young with great power arms. And if their offense can continue to produce like they did, there's no reason why they can't be there to the end in 2010. I think the other advantage is another year of experience means that they don't have to add players. The players they have are going to improve just because of their knowledge and experience that they've gained. Fastball got him two down. Well, KCAM registers this at 86 miles per hour. It's a pretty good break. Well, you'll see this thing get tracked to the lower corner of the plate. It looked like the batter thought he had this one, but in the end, it was just too much for him to handle. And uh, not the way he was looking to end that at bat, John. Right it's going to be stairs now. Well, working on the 0 1 count now. Burley with a delivery. Swings, hits this one in the air down the right field line. And there's Quentin for out number three. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for the game. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. He's the league leader in hits. That's on that off-speed pitch, but can't connect 0-1. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Hoping to try to continue some momentum off of his last game when he picked up three base hits. See if he can't keep it going. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. 
This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. Hits off the wall in a hop. And he's in at second with a double, 1 0. Beckham uh, made his debut in June, and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the major. Which certainly did. And you talk to White Sox personnel, and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. And Alex Rios up. Great season, top 10 in RBIs. 0 and 1 offering for Miller. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Time for Rios now to protect. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one. Swing the bat well. You're Swing out. and a miss. Struck him out with a breaking ball. Two down. Well, pitching like this will keep this game close for a long time. Three pitches early in the ball game, getting it done. Not a lot of wasted energy right there on that sequence. It's going to be Przinski. Batting 500 in four tries. Good chance for him here against Miller. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. They pick up no runs on one hit. You get a look there. Freddy Gonzalez. He's watched some great deliveries on the mound. Struggling bats, though. Important now to get the offense stinging. Hit in the air to left center. Damon. As he gets to it for the out. Here's a look at teams getting it done on our league leaderboard. The staffs that have the lowest ERA. Number one, the White Sox. The Mariners in second. In third, the Twins. Red Sox fourth and uh, fifth best, the A's. Now, when you lead the league in ERA, it takes oh, a lot of pressure off the offense to score runs. Their pitchers have really gotten it done so far this year and allowed the offense to take some relaxed at bats. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Well, a couple years ago, any team in baseball could have had Jorge Cantu. Florida Marlins, hey, look, we'll pick him up and give him a chance, driving in 100 runs for the first time in his career in 2009. Cantu made his debut with the uh, Rays during the 2004 season and has shown over the years he's got a legitimate chance of being a 300 hitter. Well, he does. He's a, he's a guy who can do a lot of things offensively. He can hit the ball the other way. A line drive towards the hole, and Cantu's got himself a base hit. So play. that brings up Hanley Ramirez. Shortstop, number two. Hanley Had a base Ramirez. hit his last time up. One out man on first. And Ramirez settles in first pitch change up in there for a called strike. He has a 286 batting average against the White Sox. Mark Burley gets that important strike 0 2. That's a good hard fastball right there. Let's see if he comes back with another one now. Ramirez will foul that one away. Well that's a shot into the stands right there. That's just self defense but a nice play. Ought to be a collection taken by those around him. He just saved somebody a big time hurt and got one of his own. Oh, that had to sting a little bit. Swung on and a ground at a first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Well, nice stop by the first baseman there, but the runner able to advance in the scoring position now. Runner at second base. Now here's Dan Ugla. He's off in a walk, top five in the league. First pitch to Ugla. And a strike, Burley catches him looking. You know, the walk is such a critical aspect of the game. You know, on-base percentage is so underrated. Getting a guy on base with a walk means the pitcher had to throw a lot of pitches. He had to work to try to get him out, and it tires him out for the rest of the game and in that inning. On the ground to second, Beckham. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they pick up a hit, but leave him in. And the batter's box is Tian in the top 10 in hits. Number 25, Mark Tian. Miller sets and throws. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. Here's the pitch. A line drive towards short. And that'll put Tian on first. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. Going to be Chase Utley and the Philadelphia Phillies. They'll be hosting the Boston Red Sox. Start time, 7 o'clock Eastern. No one out and a runner on first. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Swung on, line to right center field. Bounces up against the wall. There's the throw. Tian's on his way home. 
He's in there. Wow, tremendous hustle all the way from first. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Johnny Damon. Leave a pitch over the center of the plate like that, you're going to pay for it. Uh, no doubt about it. Big leaguers take advantage of those kinds of mistakes. Miller sets and throws. There's a swing and a long, high drive. Still going back over the wall. Goodbye, a two-run homer. A little distance now, increasing their lead, one to three. He got every last little bit of that one as it totally clears the center field wall. Keep in mind, that's the biggest part of this ballpark, and it wasn't even close to being in. Well, that's a great swing and strength coming into play. At the White Sox lead expanded here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 10. Bases are empty with no one out. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swing, hot shot, and another. Wow, that hitting coach is smiling. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's That's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in doubles, fourth in hits. Now, he, you notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. And he starts Canerco out. This one put in play on defense Ross. One away now. At the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Right field. And a runner on Carlos Quinton will hit. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Now Polino sets up. Line towards second. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. And Beckham's in the box. Miller sets and throws. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Oh, what an effective pitch. That two-seam fastball had him way out in front of it. He delivers. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. Oh. And this is inside, and that hit him hard. Now the ball just Center sailed field. away from him, couldn't control it, not loads the bases. And that's going to play Alex Rios. And he'll be looking to pad the lead a bit here. When you get these kinds of opportunities, you have to capitalize on it and swing the bat. And the pitcher's really got to bear down now. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Uh, Gary, as we saw that hit by pitch, not. Swing and a high drive. This could be trouble. A grand slam home run. Incredible to get a grand slam like that. They extend their lead in a flash. Wow. Well, another one right there, Gary, and that's two home runs and for this team today, and it's they're spreading the wealth. And doing the pitching, it will be Sean West as they make the pitching swap. Well, I agree with this decision. I mean, Gary, I mean, it's time to pull him out and get somebody in there that can focus and throw it over the plate. You can't afford to have a guy in there that continues to hit bad. It's going to be Przinski. Fly ball. 
Foul oh, ball. a foul ball. He deals. He makes contact. Line drive. And another hit. Oh, my. This clinic's just beginning. That brings up Mark Tian. Quick moment here. Look at the teams who are doing the most yard work. Brought to you, as always, by State Farm. The Red Sox, number one. White Sox in second. In the third spot, the Orioles. Jays fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, anytime you're near the top of the league lead in home runs like this team is, you know that you're going to block a pitcher to death. These guys just won't go deep into games because you have to focus so much every single pitch that you make one mistake, one of these guys is going to make you pay. And one of the top ten averages right now. And the play made by Helms. At the plate for the Chicago White Sox. It's going to be Knicks now. Two outs and a man on first. And the first pitch drilled towards third. That one's grabbed. Side retired. Huge third inning. They really piled it on. The White Sox on top, seven to nothing. The fourth inning. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Gian. Right now his lineup is in overdrive. A exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. And he takes the ball. 1-0. Oh. Okay, they have four hits so far in this one into the fourth inning, but they haven't been able to put them together and, and try to mount any rally. And That one swung on its line. And that gets down. Ross, a single. Not now, in time. Back. Easily Order safe at first. Well, a good Number start 20. to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well, if he could throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Change up just off the black, and it's 2 and 1. towards the middle and he's got it now in time for the out too late and he is safe at second but Gary he had thoughts about wheeling and going to second base right there but instead just went to first to get the sure out and we're going to see Helms here he's got three hits six at bats against the White Sox now it's two down the Central Division race is starting to take shape let's take a look State Farm standings board First place, the White Sox. Second place, the Royals. Twins in the third spot. Tigers in fourth place. And down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. Not a lot of... On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first side, is retired. Mark Burley, that's enough. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. He homered earlier in the ballgame. Well, a complete game here for him. I mean, you talk about the RBIs, the homers. I mean, this guy's doing everything today. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Swung on, line to right field. And it's caught. Play by Stairs. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. Here's the pitch up the middle and it gets through not bad two for three today. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out the guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Now Paul Canerco batting with a runner on first. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. And here's the delivery. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. Well, K Cam's going to show us the four seam fastball here. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Leading the MLB in batting average. First pitch to Quinton. 
This one's hit pretty well to right, but it's going to be out of play. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. There's Freddie Gonzalez on the screen. Right fielder. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. Grounded up the middle. Back up. One down. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Sunday, they wrap up this Florida series. They'll kick off a series with division rivals, the Cleveland Indians, a team they didn't have too much trouble with in their previous series. It'll be a three-game series. And they'll be taking on the Rays, led by MVP, maybe, Evan Longoria. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. And quite a bit of time away from home for, for them over these next several games. Now the first pitch. Ground ball up the middle. And Ramirez fields the ball. That retires Coglin. And Jorge Cantu, one for two in the ballgame. Cutter just misses, 1-0. and oh. Well, outstanding pitching effort so far here. I mean, he's left three runners on base in this game. I mean, but he's just right shutting ball. down this lineup, and when he needs to make a pitch, he seems to always find a way to do it. Burley with a delivery. That one's drilled to short, and it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. Stepping so that brings up Hanley Ramirez. Take a look at the teams leading the way with fewest walks Hanley allowed, Ramirez. courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Mariners in second. The Blue Jays, third. Fourth spot held with the Royals. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Will you ask any manager and any pitching coach in baseball the one thing they really hate to see, and that's putting guys on base without having to swing the bat? Well, this team does it better than anyone. They don't walk people. They're the best in the league at it. And when you have a... A liner headed for the hole, and there's Tian for the third out. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The shutout continues in Chicago. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And Beckham's in the box. First pitch, here it comes. Swing shoots this one towards the gap, right center. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. And he pulls in the second base. That will be a double. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rios. Well, great hitters get hits at just the right time. And this double right here with no one down is a nice leadoff hit to get the offense rolling early here in this inning. And Alex Rios up. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. 0-1 count as that started off with a strike. Uh, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. The pitch smashes that one towards the shortstop. This one into the alleyway should be extra bases. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. And the run comes in. Well, this is a guy right here that was made to hit fastballs, and that's what he looks for, and that's what he got right there. Put a good swing on it. He knew what to do with it for that double. No outs, runner on second. Here's the first pitch. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. That's one down. And coming up for the Marlins, they'll wrap up this series with the White Sox on Sunday. Following that, they've got to deal with Brian McCann and the bats of the Braves who come to town. That's a three-game series. 
And they'll have home field advantage as they take on the Phillies in the bat of Chase Utley. A little chance for payback there. A team that beat them the last time out. So quite a few home games. They'll be looking to capitalize. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. There is a swing and a liner. Base hit. Maybe two. Rios will head to the plate. You want your hitters to go with the pitch. Don't try to force things. The ball's away. He drives it away. Use the whole part of that plate and the whole part of that bat. He did. Kids, you want to learn how to hit? That's how you do it. Hit hard on the ground towards third. That'll be a base hit at an RBI. Well, he swung the bat well in the last game, getting two hits, and he seems to be continuing it in this one. Johnny Damon. Runners on first and second with one out. Here it comes. A shot up the middle. That's one. And they get it. They turn two. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Here's a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Gian. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. And it's Dan Ugla in the box now. And frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. Fastball, swung out and missed, 0 1. Good eye by Dan Ugla. He lays off that one to even the count. Well, he's doing an outstanding job keeping this offense off the board. And Dan always had a handful of base runners so far in this one. The four runners left on base, but, you know, they've been able to make pitches and make plays when they needed to. Swing and a miss. That's a changeup. Down on strikes, 1 0. He pulled the string right there. Must have been looking for the fastball. Swings right through the changeup for strike three. Burley with a delivery. Checks his swing that time, but it's still a strike on one. And with two strikes, Cody Ross, he's got to protect that strike zone. Tough spot for the hitter. Down 0-2. you got to protect right now. Hit up the middle. Oh, my. It ends up in the glove. I can't believe he caught that. He was just trying to get out of the way. That's some kind of play by the pitcher right there. You release the ball. You think, maybe I can take a little bit of a break. The ball comes right back at you. He got his glove up and made the out. Two outs. Base is empty. First pitch. Oh, and he checks his swing. They'll call that one a strike. The appeal goes to first. He did. And so with that, he'll step in and try his luck again. Mark Burley gets that important strike going to. Look for the pitcher to try to expand the strike zone here. The hitter has to swing at anything close. Lines this one to the left side out of play. Curveball. Thought he had him, but it's one and two. Swung on. Line softly towards right center. And Paulino's got himself a base hit. That brings up Wes Helms. Well, the National League has some real tough teams, certainly. And let's take a look at where the Florida Marlins sit among those teams. Second doubles, second batting average with runners in scoring position, and a pitching staff that's getting the job done, showing up in the top five in ERA. Pitching goes a long way to winning games, and this pitching staff's getting it done. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. This is why changing speeds is... Swings, lines this one back up the middle. Back up. And they get the force at second that time. That'll do it. That's going to do it here in the sixth inning. Steve, you can just tell by looking at it. He's thinking... And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Two for three thus far. You know, they're losing a little bit in the defensive department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just odd to make this move right now. It rolls all the way to the wall. He's in there at second base, still no one away. First base, number 14, 
Paul Canerco. He's talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Paul Canerco to the plate, runner in scoring position. A solid 357 lifetime off the Marlins. Goodbye, a two-run homer. Two-run homer just adds to a terrific hitting game they've had. You know, the pitch a pitcher needs to locate is his fastball. He went with a four-seamer right there, but missed his spot. And see ya. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. Nobody on base and nobody out. Here's the first pitch. Now swinging a shot towards second. And it's in time from his knees to get the out. Two fine plays and one right there, the dive and the throw. That's not an easy throw. When you're on your knees, be able to get that sort of strength on the ball, that's great arm strength. And it'll be Burke Badenhop doing the pitching. He's brought in to take over for the Marlins. And Beckham's in the box. Had a double his last time up. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air to left center. That's two gone. Now State Farm brings you the lead leaderboard. The team's getting the most extra base hits. The White Sox number one. The Red Sox second. Blue Jays third. Fourth, the Orioles. And fifth best, the A's. Well, this team clearly not just going up, Gary, to make contact. They're going up to drive the ball. And that's a great approach from an offense that you like to see. And so far, they're doing the best in the game. And there's Stairs for the third out. Well, they had a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox get Seven, a dugout look at Freddie Gonzalez. And a uh, tough decisions, maybe or maybe Ryan not. This bench Martin. needs some inspiration. He'll try to give it to him. And here's the first one. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And that's out number one, stepping on the back. It's going to be stairs now. He bounced out his last time. Burley with a delivery. That's on the outside corner for a strike. Well, what an outstanding effort uh, by the pitcher today. I mean, he has just been on top of his game, making the pitches, and offensively, they just have not been able to back hits up with other hits to mount the rally. They've been held scoreless here today. Rieto is the batter. Hit hard to second. So Jorge Cantu will come up. Oh, this is great patience at the plate. He lets the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way as he just did. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. That one's grabbed. Side retired. And now that's seven. Count him seven. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. Not, Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing, so interesting move. That's one away. And here's Martinez. Two for three thus far. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. A shot up the middle. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? One down, runner at first. And here's the first one. Now swing and a shot towards second. The second, there's one. And two, double play. Well, that's one way to keep your pitch count down. They wrap that inning up with three pitches. And it'll be... 
There's a familiar face, eyes again looking up. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. Cuts him out with a cut fastball for a strike. But Gary, listen, he's, he's made pitches. He's at, they've had a few base runners on against them, no question about it. They've gotten a few hits. But he's, not, he's been able to keep them from putting hit after hit after hit together. He's kept them off the scoreboard and let his defense do the work. Hit hard to second. Beckham. And so Ramirez retired. Second base. Ugla at the plate. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. First pitch on the way. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, Dan Ugg was not going to be a guy that's going to contend for a batting title, but he is going to be a second baseman who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. 31 home runs in 2009. And Douglas set down. And in the batter's box, it's Ross. Two for three thus far. First pitch to him. Swing and lined up the middle. And that gets down. Ross, a single. Now a big two out hit the right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. It's going to be Paulino now. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. Burley with a delivery. Slider just misses. One and oh. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. A 1 0 pitch. Line shot into center field, and he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four now today. For Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Well, not a bad pitch right there, down and away in the strike zone, but this guy absolutely loves that pitch in that spot, and he drove that ball to get on base. Two down, runners at first and second. And the first pitch. Swung on, line softly behind Sega base. And there's another one, couple of quick hits. And Ross is home. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Uh, it's just the same to see the shutout broken up right there, Gary, but still, just a tremendous performance today. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. And do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. Uh-oh, that one makes it all the way back. Runners will be able to get a freebie. And they'll just have to sit on this one so everybody's safe. Now the 2-1 pitch. There's a swing and a line drive. And that one's put away to retire the side. And heading to the dugout, Mark Burley. Now time for the White Sox. This is their chance in the home half of the eighth. The time. It's Damon at the plate. A couple of RBIs thus far. Quality, productive at bats, driving in a run. And then the big home run as well. So their team's winning, and he's been a big part of the production. Here's the first pitch. That swung on and a liner here. One away. Now State Farm with a look at the lineups who have honed in on pitchers over the last 10 games. The White Sox number one. The Red Sox in second. The Royals third. The Twins fourth. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. Now some of the best hitting teams in baseball right there. Teams that understand put the ball in play. Don't try to do too much. Use what the pitcher gives you and pick up a base hit. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Uh, nobody on base right now with one out. And that's what you need. You need out. This ball is hammered. Deep right. And okay. Stairs tracks okay. it down. First base. Number and Paul Canerco to bat. Oh, and a two-run homer in his last A.B. So he's swinging the bat very well today and doing a little bit of everything. Driving in runs, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, having a good ball game. Pitch on the way. There is a swing and a liner. Throw got him. That is one heck of a play. And they aren't able to get anything going in this half inning. Three up, three away. We're through eight. The ninth is coming. Quick check of the dugout. There's Freddie Gonzalez. You kind of feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe, maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. 
And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. He's been chosen to take wow. over out there. So Steve, conscious of this Florida lineup, what's on his mind? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his size, but it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that make him overall effective. Jenks sends the 2-1 pitch. Rios will field as he holds it in. I've said, uh, you know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. And here's the first one. Sliders in there, no balls and a strike. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. Swung on, that is hit. That one gets through for a base hit. So Jorge Cantu will come up. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. A fresh count on Cantu. Here it comes. Ball one. Only one career at bat prior to this one. Looking for his first lifetime off Jenks. The pitch. Here's a swing and a line drive. And Cantu's got himself a base hit. Boy, what an opportunity for here for Florida. Shortstop. As much as you want to blame the pitching, we're now talking about more than one pitcher giving up all of these hits. You right now you have to credit the offense. These guys are really swinging the bat. Manzel settling in. Catcher gets a hold of that one in the dirt. Pauses and now the 1 0. On the ground to third. There's one. But he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. Now down to their final out right here, Gary. So, I mean, they're looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. Swing and a rocket towards short. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. Dominating performance, Gary. And we're going to award the Pepsi Clutch performer. Making it happen from the batter's box, Alex Rios. Yeah, I mean, this guy came out and made this team look like world beaters today. Couple of hits, and he went big fly. All in all, it adds up to a nice day's work, and they come away on top. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. So for Steve Phillips and John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.